Have you ever felt like there's more to life than what meets the eye? Like you've suddenly woken up from a long, deep sleep and the world around you looks completely different? That's what spiritual awakening feels like. It's like putting on a pair of glasses for the first time and seeing everything in high definition. Sounds amazing, right? But here's the thing. Life after spiritual awakening isn't always rainbows and butterflies. It's a wild ride filled with ups and downs, twists and turns. In this video, we're going to dive deep into what happens after you've had that magical aha moment. We'll explore how your life might change in ways you never expected. So, buckle up and get ready for a journey into the world of spiritual awakening. Let's start by breaking down what spiritual awakening really means. Think of it as a wake-up call for your soul. It's like your spirit has been snoozing and suddenly someone cranks up the volume on life. Your eyes fly open and you start to see the world in a whole new light. Now, here's the important part. Spiritual awakening isn't some fancy, out-of-reach experience that only happens to monks on mountaintops. It can happen to anyone, anywhere, at any time. Maybe you're doing the dishes, stuck in traffic, or just taking a walk in the park. Suddenly, something clicks. You feel more alive, more connected to everything around you. It's like you've been watching life in black and white, and now someone's switched on the color. But here's the catch. Spiritual awakening isn't a one-size-fits-all kind of deal. Your experience might be totally different from your neighbors or your best friends. For some people, it's like a lightning bolt, sudden and intense. For others, it's more like a slow sunrise, gradually lighting up their world. There's no right or wrong way to experience it. Your journey is unique to you, and that's what makes it special. Now, don't expect to wake up one morning and suddenly have all the answers to life's big questions. Spiritual awakening is more like opening a door to a whole new world of questions and discoveries. It's the beginning of a journey, not the end. Think of it as leveling up in the game of life. You've unlocked new abilities, but you still need to figure out how to use them. One thing to keep in mind is that changes after a spiritual awakening don't happen overnight. It's not like in the movies where the main character has an epiphany and their whole life changes in an instant. In real life, it's more of a gradual process. You might start noticing small changes in how you think or feel. Maybe you'll find yourself reacting differently to situations that used to bother you. Or you might start feeling drawn to new ideas or practices. The key is to be patient with yourself. Just like a flower doesn't bloom in a day, your spiritual growth takes time. Some days, you might feel on top of the world like you've got it all figured out. Other days, you might feel lost and confused. That's all part of the journey. The important thing is to keep moving forward one step at a time. Remember, spiritual awakening isn't about becoming a perfect, enlightened being overnight. It's about growing learning, and becoming more aware of yourself and the world around you. It's a lifelong journey of discovery, with plenty of surprises along the way. Now let's talk about one of the biggest changes you might experience after a spiritual awakening, how you see the world. Imagine you've been wearing sunglasses your whole life, and suddenly you take them off. Everything looks brighter, clearer, more vivid. That's kind of what happens when you have a spiritual awakening. You start to notice things you've never seen before, even in places you've been a thousand times. That old tree in your backyard? Suddenly, you're amazed by how its branches reach for the sky, how its leaves dance in the wind. The stranger you pass on the street? You might find yourself wondering about their life their dreams, their struggles. It's like you've switched from watching life on a small, fuzzy TV screen to experiencing it in IMAX. 
everything feels more real, more immediate. You might find yourself getting lost in the beauty of a sunset or feeling a deep sense of wonder at the stars in the night sky. Things that used to seem ordinary suddenly become extraordinary. But it's not just about seeing the beauty in things. You might also start noticing the connections between everything. You know how in movies, they sometimes show those webs of light connecting all the people in a city. It's kind of like that. You start to understand that we're all connected to each other, to nature, to the whole universe. That grumpy cashier at the supermarket, you might start to see them as a fellow human being with their own hopes and fears, just trying to get through the day like everyone else. This new way of seeing the world can change how you react to things in your daily life. That traffic jam that used to make you want to pull your hair out? You might find yourself using it as a chance to practice patience or to appreciate the extra time to listen to your favorite podcast. The rainy day that would have ruined your plans? You might find yourself enjoying the sound of the rain or noticing how green and fresh everything looks after a shower. But here's the thing. This new perspective isn't always easy to deal with. Sometimes it can feel overwhelming. You might find yourself getting emotional over things that never used to affect you. A news story about someone in need might bring you to tears. The sight of litter in a beautiful park might fill you with a deep sense of sadness for the planet. And it's not just the big things. Even everyday experiences can take on new meaning that cup of coffee in the morning? You might find yourself really appreciating the farmers who grew the beans, the people who roasted them, everyone involved in getting that coffee to your cup. Eating a meal might become a profound experience of gratitude for the earth that provided the food. This new way of seeing things can also change how you view problems and challenges in your life. You might start to see them as opportunities for growth rather than obstacles to be avoided. That difficult co-worker? They might become your greatest teacher in patience and understanding, the setback in your career. It might turn into a chance to reassess your path and find work that truly fulfills you. But remember, this shift in perspective doesn't happen all at once. It's more like slowly turning up the brightness on your life. Some days, Everything might seem incredible and full of wonder. Other days, you might slip back into old ways of seeing things. That's okay. It's all part of the process. The important thing is to stay open to this new way of seeing the world. Try to approach each day with curiosity and wonder. Look for beauty in unexpected places. Try to see the humanity in everyone you meet. And most importantly, be patient with yourself as you learn to navigate the world with these new eyes. This new perspective isn't about ignoring the problems in the world or in your life. It's about seeing them in a broader context. You might find that you're more motivated to make positive changes, both in your own life and in the world around you. You might feel a stronger urge to help others, to take care of the environment, to spread kindness wherever you go. In a way, this new perspective is like gaining a superpower. You have the ability to see beauty where others might see nothing special. You can find meaning in the mundane, lessons in challenges, and connections where others might see only separation. It's a gift, but like any gift, it comes with responsibility. The responsibility to use this new vision to bring more light into the world to help others see the wonder that surrounds us every day. So, as you go about your day, try to remember this new way of seeing things. Look at the world around you with fresh eyes. Notice the small miracles that happen every day, the smile of a stranger, the resilience of a plant growing through a crack in the sidewalk, the breathtaking colors of the sky at sunset. Let yourself be amazed by the incredible world we live in. Because when you start seeing the world this way, every day becomes an adventure, every moment an opportunity for wonder and growth. 
Now let's dive into one of the most exciting, and sometimes scary, parts of spiritual awakening. Getting to know yourself on a whole new level. It's like you've been living in a house your whole life, but you've only ever been in one room. Suddenly, you discover a door that leads to all these other rooms you never knew existed. That's what increased self-awareness feels like after a spiritual awakening. You start to notice things about yourself that you've never paid attention to before. It's like you've got a backstage pass to your own mind. You begin to see the thoughts that pop into your head, the emotions that sweep through you, the reactions you have to different situations. And here's the cool part. You start to realize that you're not just your thoughts or your emotions, you're the one watching them. Think of it like this. Your mind is like a movie screen and your thoughts and feelings are the movie playing on that screen. Before your spiritual awakening, you were so caught up in the movie that you forgot you were watching it. Now you're able to take a step back and say, oh, that's interesting. I'm having that thought. I'm feeling that emotion. You're not just experiencing life anymore. You're observing your experience of life. This new level of self-awareness can be pretty mind-blowing at first. You might start to notice patterns in your thinking that you've never seen before. Maybe you realize that you always expect the worst to happen or that you have a habit of comparing yourself to others. Or you might notice how certain situations always seem to trigger the same emotional reactions in you. But here's the thing. Noticing these patterns isn't about judging yourself or beating yourself up. It's about understanding yourself better. It's like you're a scientist, observing your own mind with curiosity and compassion. Huh, that's interesting. I always seem to get anxious before social events. I wonder why that is. This increased self-awareness can be incredibly helpful in your daily life. For one thing, it gives you more control over your reactions. When you can see your thoughts and emotions coming, you have a chance to choose how to respond to them. It's like having a superpower, the ability to pause between stimulus and response. Let's say someone cuts you off in traffic. Before, you might have automatically gotten angry and honked your horn. Now you might notice the anger rising and think, Huh? I'm feeling angry right now. Do I want to act on that anger, or can I let it go? You're no longer on autopilot. You're in the driver's seat of your own reactions. This self-awareness can also help you understand your needs and desires better. You might start to notice what truly makes you happy, what drains your energy, what you're passionate about. Maybe you realize that you've been pursuing a career that doesn't actually align with your values. Or you might notice that certain relationships in your life aren't serving you anymore. But let's be real. This level of self-awareness isn't always comfortable. Sometimes you might not like what you see. You might become aware of parts of yourself that you've been ignoring or pushing away. Maybe you notice that you have a tendency to be judgmental or that you often put others' needs before your own. This can be tough to face. The key is to approach these discoveries with kindness and curiosity rather than judgment. Think of yourself as a good friend. If your friend came to you and said, I just realized I have this habit that I don't like, you wouldn't yell at them or make them feel bad. You'd probably listen with compassion and help them figure out how to change if that's what they want to do. Try to treat yourself the same way. Now you might be wondering, how do I actually practice this self-awareness? Well, one simple way is to take a few minutes each day to check in with yourself. Find a quiet moment, close your eyes, and just notice what's going on inside you. What thoughts are running through your mind? What emotions are you feeling? Where do you feel them in your body? Don't try to change anything. Just observe. Another great tool for developing self-awareness is journaling. Spend a few minutes each day writing down your thoughts, feelings, and experiences. Over time, 
you might start to notice patterns or insights about yourself that you never saw before. Meditation can also be a powerful way to increase self-awareness. It's like giving your mind a workout in the gym of self-observation. Even just a few minutes a day of sitting quietly and watching your thoughts can make a big difference. Remember, developing self-awareness is a lifelong journey. You're never going to reach a point where you say, Okay, I'm done. I know everything about myself now. There will always be more to discover, more layers to peel back. And that's the exciting part. Every day is an opportunity to learn something new about yourself. As you become more self-aware, you might find that you're able to make choices that align better with your true self. You might feel more authentic in your relationships, more fulfilled in your work, more at peace with yourself. You might find it easier to set boundaries, to say no to things that don't serve you, to pursue what truly matters to you. But remember, self-awareness isn't about becoming perfect. It's about becoming more you. It's about understanding and accepting all parts of yourself, the good, the bad, and everything in between. It's about growing and evolving, but also about loving yourself exactly as you are in this moment. So, as you continue on your journey of self-discovery, be gentle with yourself. Celebrate the insights you gain, but don't beat yourself up over the parts of yourself you're still working on. Remember, you're not just the movie of your life. You're the one watching it, directing it, starring in it. And with each day, each moment of awareness, you're creating a masterpiece that is uniquely, beautifully you. After a spiritual awakening, you might notice some big changes in your relationships. It's like you've tuned into a new radio station and suddenly some of the people in your life aren't on the same wavelength anymore. This can be both exciting and a little scary. First, let's talk about the relationships that might start to feel different. You know those friends you've had forever, the ones you used to hang out with all the time? You might start to feel a bit out of sync with some of them. It's not that you don't care about them anymore. It's just that your interests and priorities have shifted. Maybe you're not as interested in gossiping or complaining about work. Instead, you might want to talk about deeper topics or focus on personal growth. This doesn't mean you have to cut these people out of your life, but you might find yourself spending less time with them or connecting in different ways. It's like you've started a new chapter in your life, and not everyone from the previous chapters will have a big role in this one, and that's okay. On the flip side, you might start attracting new people into your life who are more aligned with your new way of thinking. It's like the universe is introducing you to your spiritual tribe. You might meet people at yoga classes, meditation groups or workshops, or you might suddenly click with someone you've known for years but never really connected with before. These new connections often feel deep and meaningful right from the start. It's like you've known each other for lifetimes. Now let's talk about letting go of negative relationships. This can be one of the tougher parts of the spiritual awakening process. As you become more aware and in tune with yourself, you might start to notice that some relationships in your life are draining your energy or holding you back. Maybe it's a friend who always brings negativity into your life or a romantic partner who doesn't support your growth. Letting go of these relationships isn't about being mean or judgmental. It's about recognizing what's healthy for you and what isn't. Think of it like pruning a plant. Sometimes you need to cut away the dead leaves to make room for new growth. It might be hard at first, but in the long run, it allows you to flourish. But here's the thing. Letting go doesn't always mean cutting people out completely. Sometimes it's about setting healthier boundaries. Maybe you decide to limit the time you spend with certain people, or you learn to speak up when someone's behavior is affecting you negatively. It's all about creating space for relationships that uplift and support you. Now let's talk about the relationships that might deepen 
after your spiritual awakening. You might find that your connections with some people become richer and more meaningful. It's like you're seeing them with new eyes, appreciating them on a deeper level. You might have more honest, open conversations. You might feel a stronger sense of empathy and understanding for the people in your life. This can be especially true for family relationships. As you become more self-aware, you might start to understand your parents or siblings in a new light. You might see how their own struggles and experiences have shaped them, and this can lead to more compassion and forgiveness. In romantic relationships, spiritual awakening can bring both challenges and opportunities. If you're in a relationship, you might find that your growth creates some tension, especially if your partner isn't on the same spiritual path. But it can also lead to a deeper, more authentic connection if both partners are open to growth and change. If you're single, you might find that your ideas about relationships shift. You might be less interested in superficial connections and more drawn to finding a partner who shares your values and supports your spiritual journey. You might also find that you're more comfortable being on your own as you discover a sense of wholeness within yourself. Remember, changes in relationships after a spiritual awakening are natural and normal. It's all part of aligning your outer world with your inner growth. The key is to approach these changes with compassion, both for yourself and for others. Not everyone will understand your journey, and that's okay. Your job isn't to make everyone get it. It's to stay true to yourself and surround yourself with people who support your growth. As you navigate these relationship changes, remember to be patient and kind with yourself and with others. Change takes time and everyone is on their own journey. The right people will stick around, new connections will form, and you'll find yourself surrounded by a community that truly resonates with the new you. Now let's talk about one of the most beautiful gifts that can come from a spiritual awakening, finding inner peace. It's like discovering a quiet room inside yourself where you can go to escape the noise of the world. But here's the thing. This inner peace isn't about everything in your life being perfect. It's about finding calm in the middle of life's storms. After a spiritual awakening, you might start to notice moments of unexpected calm. Maybe you're stuck in traffic, a situation that used to make you feel stressed and angry. But now you find yourself taking a deep breath and feeling okay. Not ecstatic, not miserable, just okay. That's inner peace in action. This inner peace comes from a deep understanding that you are more than your circumstances. It's like you've tapped into a well of calm that exists inside you no matter what's happening on the outside. You start to realize that your happiness doesn't depend on things going your way. Instead, it comes from a place of acceptance and trust in the flow of life. But let's be real, finding inner peace isn't about floating around on a cloud of bliss all the time. Life still has its ups and downs. You'll still feel emotions like sadness, anger, or frustration. The difference is that these emotions don't overwhelm you like they used to. It's like you're watching waves on the ocean. The surface might be choppy, but deep down, the water is still. So, what does inner peace feel like? Well, it's different for everyone, but there are some common experiences. You might feel a sense of calm in your body, like your muscles are relaxed and your breathing is easy. Your mind might feel clearer, less cluttered with worries about the past or future. You might feel more connected to the present moment, able to enjoy simple things like the taste of your food or the feeling of sunshine on your skin. Inner peace also often comes with a sense of trust in life. It's like, you know, deep down, that everything will be okay, even if it doesn't look that way right now. This doesn't mean you become passive or stop trying to improve things. It just means you're not 
fighting against reality all the time. You're able to accept things as they are, even as you work to change them. Now you might be thinking, that sounds great, but how do I actually find this inner peace? Well, it's not something you can force or achieve overnight. It's more like a practice, something you cultivate over time. Here's a simple technique you can try. Take a moment right now to pause. Close your eyes if you feel comfortable doing so. Take a deep breath in, and as you breathe out, imagine releasing any tension in your body. Now just notice how you feel. Notice any sounds around you, any sensations in your body. If thoughts come up, that's okay. Just notice them and let them pass, like clouds floating across the sky. Keep breathing slowly and deeply. This is a taste of inner peace. This moment of being present, of not fighting against what is. You can practice this anytime, anywhere. Stuck in a long line at the grocery store, use it as a chance to practice finding that inner calm. Having a stressful day at work? Take a few minutes to breathe and center yourself. The more you practice, the easier it becomes to access that peaceful place inside you. Meditation is another powerful tool for cultivating inner peace. It's like giving your mind a vacation from all its usual chatter. Even just a few minutes a day of sitting quietly and focusing on your breath can make a big difference. There are lots of apps and online resources that can guide you through simple meditations if you're not sure where to start. Nature can also be a great source of inner peace. Spending time outdoors, whether it's a walk in the park or sitting by the ocean, can help you feel more grounded and connected. There's something about being in nature that reminds us of the bigger picture and helps put our daily worries into perspective. Another way to cultivate inner peace is through gratitude. Taking time each day to appreciate the good things in your life, no matter how small, can shift your focus from what's wrong to what's right. It's like tuning your radio to a more positive station. Remember, finding inner peace is a journey, not a destination. Some days you'll feel centered and calm, other days you might feel stressed and scattered. That's all part of the process. The key is to be gentle with yourself and keep coming back to your practice no matter what. As you cultivate inner peace, you might notice changes in how you react to life's challenges. Things that used to upset you might not bother you as much. You might find it easier to let go of grudges or resentments. You might feel more patient with others and with yourself. This inner peace starts to ripple out into all areas of your life, affecting your relationships, your work, and your overall well-being. But here's an important thing to remember. Inner peace doesn't mean you become passive or stop caring about the world around you. In fact, it often leads to more effective action. When you're not caught up in stress and worry all the time, you have more energy to devote to the things that really matter to you. You're able to respond to situations with clarity and compassion rather than reacting out of fear or anger. So as you continue on your spiritual journey, remember to make time for cultivating inner peace. It's not selfish or indulgent, it's a gift you give to yourself and to the world around you. Because when you find that calm center within yourself, you become a source of peace for others too. One of the most profound shifts that can happen after a spiritual awakening is a new relationship with time. Specifically, you might find yourself living more in the present moment. It's like you've been watching life on fast forward or rewind, and suddenly someone hits the pause button. You start to experience life as it's happening, right here, right now. But what does it really mean to live in the present? Well, think about how much time we usually spend dwelling on the past or worrying about the future. We replay old conversations in our heads, stress about upcoming events, or daydream about what might happen someday. While some amount of reflection and planning is useful, 
Most of us spend way too much time outside of the present moment. After a spiritual awakening, you might start to notice when your mind wanders off into the past or future. And here's the cool part. You can choose to bring it back to the present. It's like you've become the director of your own attention, able to point the camera of your awareness where you want it to go. Living in the present doesn't mean you never think about the past or future. It just means you're not constantly lost in thoughts about other times. You're able to be here now, experiencing life as it unfolds. And let me tell you, when you start living this way, life becomes so much richer and more vibrant. You might start to notice little details you've never seen before. The way sunlight dances on leaves, the complex flavors in your food, the feeling of your feet on the ground as you walk. It's like you've turned up the volume on your senses and suddenly the world seems more alive. Being present also changes how you interact with others. When you're fully there in a conversation, really listening instead of thinking about what you're going to say next, your connections become deeper and more meaningful. You might find that people open up to you more or that you're better able to understand and empathize with others. But here's the thing. Staying present isn't always easy. Our minds are used to wandering and that's okay. The key is to notice when you've drifted off and gently bring your attention back to the present. It's like training a puppy. You wouldn't get angry at a puppy for wandering off. You'd just calmly bring it back. Treat your mind the same way. So how can you practice being more present in your daily life? Well, here's a simple exercise you can try right now. Take a moment to focus on your breath. Feel the air moving in and out of your body. Notice the rise and fall of your chest or belly. If your mind wanders, that's okay. Just notice it and bring your attention back to your breath. This is a basic mindfulness practice and it's a great way to anchor yourself in the present moment. You can bring this kind of awareness to any activity in your day. When you're eating, really taste your food. When you're walking, feel the sensation of your feet touching the ground. When you're talking to someone, really listen to what they're saying. These simple acts of presence can transform ordinary moments into extraordinary ones. Nature can be a great teacher when it comes to present moment awareness. When you're outside, use all your senses. Feel the breeze on your skin. Listen to the birds singing. Smell the flowers or the earth after rain. Nature has a way of pulling us into the present moment if we let it. Another powerful way to practice presence is through mindful movement like yoga or tai chi. These practices combine physical movement with breath awareness, helping to bring your mind and body into the present moment. Even simple stretches or a mindful walk can be a form of moving meditation. As you practice living in the present, you might notice some interesting changes. For one thing, time might start to feel different. When you're fully engaged in the present moment, time can seem to slow down or even stand still. You might find that you're less rushed, more able to enjoy each moment as it comes. You might also notice that your stress levels decrease. A lot of our stress comes from worrying about the future or regretting the past. When you're fully present, those worries tend to fade into the background. You're dealing with what's actually happening right now, not what might happen or what already happened. Living in the present can also help you make better decisions. When you're not caught up in anxiety about the future or regrets about the past, you can see situations more clearly. You're able to respond to what's actually happening rather than reacting based on old patterns or future fears. But remember, living in the present doesn't mean you never plan for the future or learn from the past. It just means you're not constantly lost in thoughts about other times. You can choose to think about the past or future when it's useful and then return your attention to the present. As you continue on your spiritual journey, 
Remember that the present moment is where life is actually happening. It's where you have the power to make choices, to connect with others, to experience joy and growth. The more you can bring your awareness to the here and now, the more fully you can live. So take a deep breath, look around you, and really be here. This moment right now is your life. And it's pretty amazing when you really pay attention to it. Uncovering your purpose, the journey of self-discovery. After a spiritual awakening, you might find yourself asking some big questions. Why am I here? What's my purpose in life? It's like you've woken up and realized there's more to life than just going through the motions. This search for purpose is a beautiful part of the spiritual journey, but it can also feel overwhelming at times. First, let's clear up a common misconception. Finding your purpose doesn't necessarily mean you'll suddenly know exactly what you're supposed to do with your life. It's not like a bolt of lightning will strike and you'll say, Aha! I'm meant to be a dolphin trainer. Unless, of course, that does happen to you. For most of us, discovering our purpose is more of a gradual process of uncovering what truly matters to us. Your purpose might be simpler and more profound than you imagine. Maybe it's about spreading kindness or helping others or creating beauty in the world. Maybe it's about being a loving parent or a supportive friend. Your purpose might evolve over time, changing as you grow and learn. One way to start uncovering your purpose is to pay attention to what lights you up inside. What activities make you lose track of time? What topics can you talk about for hours? What kind of work or volunteer activities leave you feeling energized rather than drained? These can be clues pointing towards your purpose. You might also find that your purpose is connected to your unique gifts and talents. We all have something special to offer the world, even if we don't always recognize it in ourselves. Maybe you're a great listener, or you have a knack for explaining complex ideas, or you're able to make people laugh. Your purpose might involve using these gifts in service of others. Another important aspect of finding your purpose is listening to your inner voice. After a spiritual awakening, you might find that you're more in tune with your intuition. Pay attention to those gut feelings, those whispers of inspiration. They're often trying to guide you towards your true path. Remember, your purpose doesn't have to be grand or world-changing, although it might be. Sometimes, living your purpose is as simple as bringing more love and kindness into your everyday interactions. It might be about being fully present with your loved ones or doing your work with integrity and care. As you explore your purpose, be patient with yourself. It's okay if you don't have it all figured out right away. Your purpose might reveal itself gradually, like a flower slowly blooming. Trust the process and stay open to the possibilities that life presents. While spiritual awakening can bring many positive changes, it's not always smooth sailing. There can be challenges along the way, and it's important to be prepared for them. Think of it like climbing a mountain. The view from the top is amazing, but the climb itself can be tough at times. One common challenge is feeling different from others. As you start to see the world in a new way, you might feel out of step with friends or family who don't share your new perspective. You might find yourself less interested in things that used to be important to you or more concerned about issues that others don't seem to care about. This can sometimes lead to a sense of isolation. You might feel like you don't quite fit in anymore or like there's no one who really understands what you're going through. Remember, this is a normal part of the process. Many people who go through spiritual awakenings experience this feeling of being different or separate for a while. Another challenge can be dealing with old patterns and habits that no longer serve you. As you become more aware, you might notice behaviors or thought patterns that you want to change. 
But change isn't always easy, even when we know it's for the best. You might find yourself falling back into old ways of thinking or acting, and that's okay. Growth is a process, and it takes time. You might also experience what's sometimes called the dark night of the soul. This is a period of deep questioning and uncertainty. You might feel lost or confused, like everything you thought you knew has been turned upside down. While this can be a difficult time, it's often a necessary part of the growth process. It's like clearing out an old, cluttered room before you can redecorate it. So how can you deal with these challenges? Here are a few strategies. First, be gentle with yourself. Remember that growth isn't always comfortable and it's okay to struggle sometimes. Treat yourself with the same kindness and patience you would offer a good friend. Second, find your tribe. Look for people who are on a similar journey. This might mean joining a spiritual group, attending workshops or retreats, or connecting with like-minded people online. Having a supportive community can make a big difference. Third, keep learning and growing. Read books, listen to podcasts, try new spiritual practices. The more tools you have in your toolbox, the better equipped you'll be to handle challenges. Fourth, stay grounded. It's easy to get caught up in spiritual ideas and forget about the practical aspects of life. Remember to take care of your physical health, maintain your relationships, and fulfill your responsibilities. Finally, remember that challenges are opportunities for growth. Each difficulty you face is a chance to put your new awareness into practice to become more of who you truly are. As we wrap up our exploration of life after spiritual awakening, it's important to remember that this journey doesn't have an end point. Spiritual growth is a lifelong process full of twists and turns, ups and downs. It's not about reaching a final destination, but about continually evolving and expanding your consciousness. Think of it like tending a garden. You don't plant seeds and then say, great, I'm done. You keep watering, weeding, and nurturing your plants. In the same way, your spiritual life needs ongoing care and attention. One key to continuing your journey is to stay curious. Keep asking questions, exploring new ideas, and being open to new experiences. The moment we think we have all the answers is often the moment we stop growing. Approach each day with a beginner's mind, ready to learn and discover. It's also important to be patient with yourself. Growth doesn't happen overnight. Sometimes you might feel like you're taking two steps forward and one step back. That's normal. Remember that even setbacks are opportunities for learning and growth. Developing a regular spiritual practice can help you stay connected to your inner wisdom. This might mean meditating daily, keeping a gratitude journal, spending time in nature, or whatever resonates with you. The key is consistency. Small, regular practices often have a bigger impact than occasional grand gestures. As you continue on your path, remember to celebrate your progress. Take time to reflect on how far you've come, how much you've grown. Acknowledge the changes you've made, the insights you've gained. This can help motivate you to keep going, especially during challenging times. Finally, remember that your spiritual journey isn't just about you. As you grow and evolve, you become better equipped to serve others and make a positive impact on the world. Your increased awareness, compassion, and understanding ripple out, affecting everyone you interact with. As we come to the end of our exploration of life after spiritual awakening, let's take a moment to reflect on the journey we've discussed. We've covered a lot of ground. From the initial shifts in perspective to the ongoing process of growth and self-discovery. Remember, spiritual awakening isn't a destination. It's the beginning of a lifelong journey. It's about continually expanding your awareness, deepening your understanding of yourself, 
and the world around you. It's about living with more presence, purpose, and peace. The path after awakening isn't always easy. There will be challenges along the way, moments of doubt, periods of struggle, but there will also be moments of profound joy, deep connection, and incredible growth. Each step of the journey, whether it feels positive or negative in the moment, is an opportunity for learning and expansion. As you continue on your path, remember to be gentle with yourself. Celebrate your progress, learn from your setbacks, and always keep an open mind and heart. Trust in your own inner wisdom, but also remain open to learning from others and from life itself. Your spiritual awakening is a gift, not just to you, but to the world. As you become more aware, more present, more aligned with your true self, you naturally begin to have a positive impact on those around you. Your growth and healing contribute to the growth and healing of the collective. So embrace this awakened life. Live it fully with all its joys and challenges. Stay curious, stay open, stay committed to your growth. And remember, in every moment, you have the opportunity to choose awareness, to choose love, to choose to be fully alive. Thank you for joining me on this exploration of life after spiritual awakening. May your journey be filled with light, love, and continuous growth. Remember, this is your unique path. Walk it with courage, with compassion, and with an open heart. The adventure of your awakened life is just beginning.